to start this service with the shampoo reason being is just to ensure that we have a nice clean canvas to work with so right here i'm just working in the shampoo and now i'm going to go ahead and rinse that out now we're going to go ahead and follow this up with some conditioner and this is just to add some moisture back in the hair so we're going to work this in as well and then we'll go ahead and rinse it out then we're going to go ahead and dry his hair with a towel, making sure that I'm not too aggressive with it. And while his hair is still slightly damp, I'm going to go ahead and comb it into place. And since we're not going to be doing a trim in this haircut on top, he wanted to keep the length. I'm going to go ahead and blow dry his hair into his desired style. And now this isn't going to be a finished style, but this is just to get the hair in place and how he normally would wear it in a normal day. So we know exactly where we're blending into, right? Now moving on to his hard part, we're gonna go ahead and comb the hair, you know, to where it would lay. And then we're gonna flip that trimmer upside down and hit the bottom of that line, making sure that I'm careful and not making it too big, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and flip that trimmer around and hit the top of the line. And we're just keeping it as natural as possible, as thin as possible. And then we're going to go ahead and follow it up with the razor to get it to that next level. And that hard part came in nice. And now getting into the fade. Setting in my bald line, I'm starting at the bottom of his eyebrow. And then I'm going to slope it around his, hair, his ear and drop it towards the back. And this is going to give the fade a nice shape that kind of complements the client's head, right? And now we're gonna go ahead and bald everything under it out. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just zooming through this part. And now we're just gonna go ahead and follow it up with the shaver to go ahead and get it a lot closer to the skin. And now moving on, I didn't realize I didn't record this part, but I'm going over it and acting like I cut it. This is a one guard all the way open. And right here, I went up about an inch and a half. And then right under that one guard open, I'm going to go ahead and close it. Staying slightly below the top of that one guard open line. But this is my one guard closed. And now we're going to come in with my clipper all the way open. And we're not really setting a line in here. We're flicking out as much as possible, trying to blend into that one guard. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the lever all the way. And then you'll see me gradually start to open that lever as I move up until that line is as blended out as possible, right? And I'm using a lot of the corner of the blade here just so I don't create any lines. And I'm trying to skip using the half guard in this video, which is why I fa I'm fading this way. And now going to the back again, I didn't realize I didn't record that part, but I did the same thing. I went in open under that one guard open, and then I closed the lever and then moved up gradually until that line was blended out. Still detailing using the corner of that blade. And now right above that one guard open, I'm gonna go in with my two guard all the way open. And with this, I'm trying to blend into the uh, the bulk or the weight that he has right there at his proud ridge as best as possible. You know what I mean? So I don't um, have too much work to do when I come in with my clipper over comb or uh, thinning shears. So that is my two guard open. Keeping that same exact shape that dropped towards the back. And now right under that two guard open, I'm gonna come in with my one and a half all the way open. And then I'll gradually start to close that lever as needed. So right here, I went ahead and closed it. And you can see as I do that, this blend is already starting to come together. It's starting to fit his head shape very well. So I'm just working that one and a half towards the back right here. So I'm going ahead and closing it. 
and you can see that it's it's not really getting rid of that line in the back of his head but we're gonna go ahead and follow that up with our one guard open here in a sec and that's what it's all about just trial and error like this one and a half didn't work so I went back to my one guard which is what I set the line in you know with the first place and I'm just using that to go ahead and get rid of the line using the corner of my blade opening and closing as needed and I think even after this one guard I go ahead and use my half guard which is what which is the guard that I was trying not to use right but I think I go ahead and grab that here after this so we'll see I don't know I forgot so this is my one guard I'm just you know detailing getting into those dark areas And you'll see, it looks like I'm going over the same spot over and over, but that's what it takes. It's just detailing, right? And I knew it. I did go back to the half guard. So this is my half guard all the way open. Just attacking those areas that I see that are dark. And then I'll close it. You know what I mean? If the open isn't doing the job. And as we continue to detail, this blend just continues to, uh, you know, look more fluid, look more consistent. And now right above that two guard open, I'm going in with my, I believe this is a number three guard, or a no, number four guard, and I'm just going straight off the shape of his head. With this hair texture, uh, it's a little bit different. There's a lot of weight up there, but it doesn't elevate off of the head, so it kind of looks like it's shaved, right? But I did leave the weight right there. So this is my four guard, just coming off the shape of his head, trying to blend into that as best as possible. And then right under that, I grab my three guard, and I'm just using the, the the three guard open, and I'm just detailing, trying to get that blend as consistent as possible, combing as I do so. And now to go ahead and soften this blend up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and use my thinning shears, and I'm just going in with my comb and flaring out slightly, and any hair sticking out of the comb, I'm just going ahead and attacking with those... Uh, you know those thinning shears now what thinning shears do is get rid of weight lines without removing too much length right so it still keeps the same shade of darkness but it's just getting rid of those dark spots that we see and now I move the camera a little bit closer to show you how I detail a fade so right here I'm using the my clipper all the way open in the corner of the blade to get into dark spots that create inconsistencies in the fade and I'm gonna go ahead and just tap those, right? And you can see, I can use that clipper all the way open when I use my corner, all the way up to where I used the one and a half. And that's what using the corner can do, It just detail it a lot better, right? So I'm going in again with my uh, one and a half closed in the back, trying to get this blend, you know, a little bit more um, consistent and not as choppy. And you can see as we, as we continue to detail this fade, man, it starts to come go to another level. And right here, I'm pointing out some light spots that are in his head. And those are just areas where the hair isn't as dense or the hair is kind of missing. I didn't create those myself, you know what I mean? But I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. And now I'm coming in with my one and a half. So I only showed you guys one uh, side of the fade. And now I'm going to come in with my volumizing powder. And I'm going to style the hair before I go ahead and do the lineup. And now I'm going to follow that up with our uh, clay pomade. I'm going to work that right into the hair. And I'm just going to go ahead and just, uh, I said design, style it into his desired, uh, you know, look. And then I'm going to use my styling comb and I'm going to uh, comb those hairs down where the side part is at. And I'm gonna use the, the the side with the cool teeth on it to go ahead and just create some nice uh, texture in his hair and some nice lines. And the reason I wanted to style the hair before I got into the lineup is just to go ahead and get it out the way. And now I'm gonna start the lineup by going into his arch first. So I started at the top of the arch and then I went to the bottom and met it in the middle. And that's how I'm gonna get that nice round shape without being too cosmetic. And then I'm gonna line up his box. And then I'm gonna do this right here, which is kind of like trimmer over comb to remove some weight on his hairline that would cause uh, the hair to hang over the hairline. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and line it up natural but still getting it as crispy as possible right and now to blend into the beard I'm gonna go in with my clipper open using the same steps that I use on the head on the beard just going the opposite direction and then I'm gonna follow up, follow it up with my one guard and then it's pretty much blended it's super simple now I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other side of the head and line up that side as well and I want to keep it as natural as possible while again getting it as sharp and as crispy as possible and you can see as we put the line on there it kind of just acts as like the framework to that that blend or that fade and I feel like this fade came out super blurry let me know what you guys think about it in the comments so far and we are gonna enhance this cut, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my airbrush and my uh, Tune 45 um, enhancement card. And I'm just gonna uh, spray it on there lightly, keeping it as natural looking as possible. And then I'm gonna blend into his beard on this side as well. And this is our one guard. And you can see after that one guard, it kinda just naturally blends into that link. And now we're gonna go ahead and line up the back of his beard, making sure that we don't push it in, you know, too far to where that grow back looks kind of crazy. And now we're gonna line up the bottom of his beard as well. Being super careful because that is a sensitive area. And now with the beard, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that nice round shape that you guys already seen he naturally had. And we're just gonna make it sharper, right? And you can see how from the top of the C cup all the way down into the beard, it kind of looks like a big C and I want to make sure that that shape stays there which I'm pointing out right here so I'm making sure that I'm stretching the skin when I use the razor and I'm just getting rid of all those hairs that the clipper couldn't get so I'm starting at the top of the beard and then I'm just gonna move towards the bottom and you can see as we do that it starts to come out super sharp And now we are going to enhance his beard as well. So right here I'm using Elegant Semi-Permanent Hair Color. And I'm just putting it directly where I lined up the beard. And then I'm going to go ahead and brush it in. And I'm going to try to keep this as natural looking as possible as well. So as you guys have seen, my man came in looking pretty rough. So we went ahead and put them together. Family, thank you for watching this video. I pray that this helped you and added value to you. Like always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video. Make sure you follow me at Drake Clipper Hands on Instagram. But again, thank you for watching this video. Catch y'all next time.